So this command is a bit of a game changer, we think, <clears throat> from the point of view of people digitizing data from plans, or just creating 3D data in general, or even 2D data in general. Um, the command is called uh, takeoff lines, it's going to be part of the uh, modeling toolbox, and it's going to be found right here in the takeoff group. In the takeoff lines command, we've basically taken a whole range of uh, line entry methods and made them into smart commands within one command. So for example, we start off and we're going to pick uh, a layer that we want to put things on. So I created these finished grade line work layers. So I'm going to say uh, FD digitize to start off with. And we can choose one of a different method. The first method is 2D lines. So let's say I just want to measure areas of something. And I want to measure, let's say, the areas of these pad areas, for example. Let's just take that as an example. So in here, I can go in here and I can say all my pads are going to be four points and I'm going to auto close them. And then I'm going to give them a name. Let's call them pad. And now I can just digitize. So I can zoom in, digitize point one, point two, go up to point three, and point four. When I know the fourth point, it starts a new line automatically. So I can just start each pad fully automatically without entering any elevation data whatsoever. So this is a 2D digitizing method, and it automatically knows to close out the line when I get to the fourth point. Let's take an example where, for instance, if I was digitizing contours and the contours had gaps across the text. I haven't got them in this particular file, but I created a quick example here. So there's two point lines across here. So in this case, I want to digitize um, uh, these lines might originally be 2D or they might be 3D, but I want to close out these lines. I can either use a join command or I could use the 2D command here and say don't close, but I want to stop and start a new line after every two points. And this time I'm going to call it contour. And now we're going to just jump between the two endpoints of the line. So I'm using endpoint snaps to just join from one to the other, just like this. And I'm closing out the line very quickly. So any two-point line you can do, and it will automatically refresh and renew. And if you were doing it with elevations, it would actually be capturing the elevations and stuff as you go. So that's a kind of a neat tool here. Um, so this 2D lines, and another one um, you can do in here. So this is the big thing. This is a big thing for 2D lines. And then just being able to digitize lines straight out of the gate without having to start a new line all the time, uh, or being able to do a very quick line without being asked for elevations or having to change sticky buttons and stuff. So it's a very quick way of digitizing 2D lines. Okay, so in this example, we're going to do a 3D line with single elevation on the first point only, which is ideal for contours or pads. And in this case, we're going to say don't auto start after two points, and we're going to just say it's a contour, and we're going to start over here. So it's going to ask me for the elevation on the first point that I click, and it's 193. I hit return. Now it's opened the line so I can continue. I zoom into the end here and find the tangent point. So I'm just going to click on the tangent point here, go around the corner until I get to the tangent at the other end. And this time I'm going to hold the control key down and click here. And that will now generate a curve when I generate the next point. So the next point is up here on the straight. And let's say that's where the tangent point would be there. And then I digitize a control click on the next point. And if I find where the tangent point is here, let's click here somewhere and then do the tangent along the straight section here and then do a control click on this corner over here and the curve comes around here a bit more maybe to there and then a tangent down to here somewhere and then I do a control click over here and then I do a tangent down over here to this point somewhere let's say it starts somewhere here and then a control click on the other end so I can find where the tangent is somewhere here and then go across to the end point again. And you'll see now that I've drawn curves all the way around here. I missed it on this one. I forgot to press the control key. But you can see I generated all the curves around a corner. Now, if there's anything on here that you find maybe it's not matching quite right, so this wasn't matching, you could hit the grips button now to enable the grips on this line. And when you do that, now you can move the grips up and down. You can change this until it fits the data properly. And then you can move on to the next line as before. So that's a very quick and easy way to digitize curve and straight line sections when there's single elevation. Then you just type in the next elevation on the first point in the next line and do the next one. Next exercise we'll do is we'll take a quick look at um, digitizing for a curved center line. So let's look at sheet three here. And this center line right here is curves, but in this case you've got elevations and some of the elevations are in mid segment. Some of them aren't at the tangent point. So it's a little bit more complex to do. So let's take a look at how we would do that one. So in this case, we're going to do the 3D elevations on multiple nodes. Not automatic, because I don't know the elevations. I have to type them in. So now I'm going to start working with this one. So again, this one is now centerline. 
and we're going to start the digitizing process. So I'm going to start here at the center line point up here, wherever the center line is right here. So start at this point, and the elevation on that one is 201.05. So 201.05 for a center, and now I can scroll down here. Now if I want to do each point as a separate node, then I can use the just the normal click and type in the elevation. Or if I hold control shift key down, I can just create a, a VPI point of 200.65 and press enter, and you'll see it puts a marker down for me. Click on the next point with a control shift, 200.24, another VPI point. And then when I get down to this point, I need to click here because I need to create this as a line point. So this is 199.83. So that was done without a control click. And now I can click the tangent point here if I can find where the tangent is. It's about there somewhere, I think. So I can start there, and this one has no elevation. Then I use my control shift click again here on the middle point of the arc where I've been given an elevation, 199.42. Now I can move round to the tangent point at the other end of the line here, which is going to be somewhere in this area. I'm going to use the control click because there's no elevation there. Just press enter, then scroll along, and now I'm into this scrolling again. So you can see there's several points along here with elevation. So this time I'm just going to use control shift, click here, 199. 0.01, and then do the next one, click here, 198.61, but again if we use the grips now, you can see that if I move the grip lines through here, I can actually change the shape of that curve by just adjusting where the grips are on here, and you can see now I've got a much better fit, so I can check that on each line after I've completed it, before I actually start the next line, etc. So there's some other cool tricks in here, um, that's the 3D elevations on multiple lines, um, this one is fully automatic. In other words, if I go through here and I click on things that are three-dimensional, it will autom automatically pick the elevations from it. So, for example, if I go in here, I've got a simple line here, which is maybe the back of curb, and this is the flow line of a curb. So what we can do here is we can say, take 3D automatically if it exists. So in this case, we can now say we're going to call this one uh, KB or CB for curb. And now we can just pick the point on the line. So I'm going to pick the end of this line, which is 2D and it asks me for the elevation, so I can either pick a 3D location or I can pick a piece of text. Now this bit of text is for the top back of curb and this is maybe half a foot lower than that. So what I can do here is I can say use a formula and take off 0.5 from the elevation to drop it down to the flow line. So this is 102.3, this one should be 101.8. Now I can actually click on uh, the coordinate, so I'm going to click on this coordinate. And when it asks me for elevation, if I click here or click here, it will take it for me and you can see it's put it on 101.8. So now I can adjust the elevation directly. So if I'm digitizing this line, as I drop each node here, it asks me to stop and ask for the elevation. So I do that and it corrects it by half a foot in here as I go. So again, pick this line, pick this elevation. It's now corrected it. So again, it's half a foot lower. And then this one, keep going along here. So again, a nice easy way to click in elevation data using something else, but also making an adjustment for the elevations of a surface. So that's fully automatic. If I, if I click on 3D objects, it picks them up automatically. If it doesn't have one, it asks me for one, and I can also put in an adjustment here for each one. So quite often on projects, you'd also need to do things like offsetting a line vertically when you're tracing across a surface model. So here we have a surface model, and this could be, for instance, a water main. So I want to come off the finished grade, and I want it to be 5 feet below finished grade. So I'm going to use the Z-5 in the formula field here. And that allows me then to trace across the surface, and it's going to extract the elevation from the surface as I go, using the elevation of the surface that's 5 feet. So now if I close that out, and I tip this up on its side in 3D view, we can actually see that our water main is now sitting below the surface by five feet all the way along and it's changing elevation as it goes so it's tracking for instance underneath the road five feet below below grade which is a pretty neat tool as well for when you're calculating things being able to do it live you can also use this for instance for tracing out areas of pavement on a finished grade pavement surface that you may have already created so as you're digitizing over it and you're thinking you're digitizing in 2d you can digitize it in 3d so the actual pavement finish is actually at the same elevation as the surface is at the start of the process. So that's all of the quick line uh, functionality. 
I'll say that the, the cool stuff about it is that the uh, the line, uh, the speed of being able to draw the line with these different process modes, these kind of functionality in the middle, the formula functionality, the way that this interacts. There's one thing I didn't cover in here, and that's the ability to auto reverse a line. So, for instance, I'm digitizing a line, and I start off by digitizing just a series of points. And let's say I now need to extend it going the other direction. I can just reverse the direction and then just continue this direction and then reverse back again to continue in the other direction. So the fact that we've integrated curve fitting, all the elevation controls, we fitted, you know, taking elevations from points, from text, from 3D lines, we've taken elevations from surface models, we're allowed to offset and adjust the elevation using a formula, we can auto close it to make pads, we can auto, uh, auto start a new line after a certain number of points if we have a repetitive process to do. The whole command will take hours out of every day of digitizing that you have to do and make it so much smoother and easier to work with. This is the take off lines command. It's going to make a huge difference to you if you're doing digitizing or entry of data for any type of data prep or modeling process. Okay, thanks very much.